KX architectures in financial institutions rarely deviate from a particular layout of queue processes known as standard tick architecture. This same fundamental architecture is also standard in automotive and IoT industry applications, though terminology and certain aspects like data save down frequency may vary. The purpose of KDB Plus TIC architecture is to capture, analyze, and store messages received from a data feed. The name TIC refers to any new information received into our KDB Plus system. So this can be a new stock quote or even a new sensor reading. TIC architecture is highly configurable and there's many ways to assemble the KDB Plus TIC building blocks. However, a vanilla TIC setup has a ticker plant logging incoming data to disk and publishing it to an in-memory real-time database. And then at the end of the day, this data is saved to disk as another day's data in the historical database. In this setup, the data feed and the associated feed handler are external to the KDB Plus environment. We can break this down, explaining each of the processes in a bit more detail. So the data feed is the source data that we're aiming to ingest into our system. Often these feeds come in a proprietary format, so they need to be processed. In financial use cases, this data feed might be a Reuters or a Bloomberg feed. It can also be data from a particular exchange or even some internal data feed. For manufacturing data, this may be a sensor reading. A feed handler is a process which captures external data and translates it into KDB Plus messages. Feed handlers are adapters which take the data and parse it from the incoming format to the format which can be ingested by KDB Plus processes further downstream. Multiple feed handlers can be used to gather data from a number of different sources and feed it to the KDB Plus system for storage and analysis. The most frequently used technologies for feed handlers are C and Java. Feed handlers receive the data, extract the fields of interest, perform some data type casting, and then reorder the fields to match with corresponding table schemas. It then pushes this massage data to a ticker plant in column oriented list format. The ticker plant is a specialized KDB Plus process that operates as a link between the client's data feed and a number of subscribers. It receives data from the feed handler, appends a timestamp to it, saves it as a log file, and then publishes this data out to any processes that are subscribed to it. When we start a ticker plant process, we provide it with a table schema for the tables we want to capture. Subscriber processes may then subscribe to all or a subset of these tables. Once it publishes this data, it then purges any records from the tables. In this way, the ticker plant uses very little memory, whilst the full record of the intraday data is still maintained by the subscribing real-time database. As a ticker plant depends a timestamp to the incoming data, it's also able to check if the date boundary has been reached in order to kick off the end of day process. At the end of the day, ticker plant sends a message to all of its real time subscribers telling them to execute their end of day function. The ticker plant is usually the first point of entry into the KDB Plus system. As such, all messages received are logged to disk in a ticker plant log file to enable recovery. This ticker plant log file is really just a queue binary file containing a list of all the messages received from the ticker plant. For each day, there's one global ticker plant log file containing all the data which passed through the ticker plant. This file exists for replay purposes as the ticker plant is designed to be very lightweight and not store anything into memory. When a real-time subscriber starts up or it crashes intraday and is restarted, this daily log file can be replayed in order to get the subscriber to be fully up to date. The duration of this replay will depend on how many messages are in the log file the disk read speed, and how quickly the process can replay the messages. This brings us on to the real-time database, or the RDB for short. This process holds all of the intraday data in memory to allow for fast, powerful queries. It's one of the simpler processes, as it subscribes to the ticker plant and keeps a record of the tables for that day. At startup, the RDB sends a message to the ticker plant and receives a reply containing the data schema, the location of the log file, and the number of lines to read from this log file. It then reads these lines and then receives subsequent updates from the ticker plant itself as they're published. At the end of the day, the RDB will save the data down to disk in date partition format. It will then send a message to the historical database telling it to refresh to pick up this new data. The default behavior of the RDB is to collect data to an in-memory database during the day and then save it to disk as a historical partition at day end. 
This makes sense if this data is needed to perform queries during the day. But if the only reason for having the RDB is to save the historical partition, then the cost of keeping this data in memory can be excessive. And this is where the intraday database comes in. An intraday database is a way of storing data which is not needed for queries on disk while waiting for the end of day action to occur. Generally, real-time data which is less than a certain time threshold all will be stored in the RDB, and then any older intraday data will be written to disk in the intraday database. This time threshold is customizable, so it could be one minute, 15 minutes, or even a few hours. At the end of the day then, remaining data in the RDB is flushed to the IDB. The data is then sorted on disk, and then this data is moved to the appropriate date partition within the historical database. The historical database consists of on-disk KDB plus data, typically split into date partitions. While the RDB and the IDB store today's data, the HDB stores data from yesterday and before. Clients who wish to query records prior to today will query this process. Each date partition is mapped in memory so that the KDB plus process knows where to read each partition from. This allows for fast and efficient queries across large data volumes. Data will only be loaded into memory on demand when the client queries the HDB tables. At the end of the day, the IDB is instructed to save its data on disk to the HDB in this partition format. The final process in TIC architecture is a real-time subscriber. A real-time subscriber process is an umbrella term used to describe any other process which is not an RDB that subscribes to real-time data from the ticker plant. These processes typically perform complex logic on the incoming data to carry out a specific function. They usually utilize streaming analytics, which are applied to the real-time feed to calculate desired metrics. Where the function of the real-time subscriber is singular and well-defined, it may be named something more clearly like a surveillance alert engine or a last value cache. A last value cache, as the name suggests, is a process which only stores the last value for a particular key in a table. Like the RDB, the last value cache subscribes to the ticker plant for updates. But rather than merely adding a new row to its own table each time it receives an update, it adds the received data into a keyed table, overwriting the previous value for that day. In a financial setting, this might allow a client process to see the last trade for each symbol much quicker than connecting to an RDB and doing some select statement. While a select statement may be performant at the beginning of the day, as data volumes increase, the performance will degrade and give an inconsistent user experience. This process helps to minimize the load and create a consistent return experience by acting in a continuous fashion. Other more complicated process can have less defined names, such as a real-time engine or a complex event processor. A complex event processor is a further abstraction of a real-time subscriber process with the understanding that this process performs calculations on the incoming data rather than inserting or upserting into particular tables. When a complex event processor receives an update for a table, its function can calculate some statistics on the fly and update its stats table. This way, if a client wants to get stats about a table, they don't have to calculate them each time from the raw data in the RDB. Instead, it's done incrementally by the complex event processor, which means that the query time is much faster. Hardware failure, network problems, and data corruption are all events that can lead to significant downtime and potentially severe business impact. Failover is the capability to switch over to a redundant or standby server upon the failure or termination of an existing asset. In the KDB Plus TIC setup, failure can be designed or configured at a whole system level or at a process by process level. Generally, if a critical process goes down and doesn't restart, the entire system will fail over to a mirrored secondary or backup system. However, if a non-critical process goes down and doesn't restart, it may be judged unnecessary to fail over the entire system to a secondary server. So only the mirrored process in the secondary server will be used to take over from the failed process. Usually, the secondary system will run a completely separate infrastructure with a separate file system and save the data to a secondary database directory separate from the primary. In this way, if the primary system or underlying infrastructure goes offline, the secondary will be able to take over completely. The end goal is always to maintain availability of the application and minimize any disruption of the business, with redundancy always required in a production environment. So that was an overview into TIC architecture with KDB+.
Due to high customizability of this setup, it is rare that two systems will be configured the exact same way. However, this video aims to give you a high level overview of the building blocks used in TIC architecture. Thanks for watching.